Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, just uh, chaired together with Secretary of Defense um, Ashton Carter uh, a very um, dense discussion with the um, major partners of countries involved in the coalition acting in support of local forces uh, fighting against um, ISIL. Our coalition exists since the uh, 19th of September 2014 when France struck uh, ISIL uh, targets in Iraq for the first time north of Mosul. From that date, the United States were no longer alone. Since uh, then, uh, many countries have joined us, stressing that the fight that we are leading is the fight of all states determined to eradicate a totalitarian terrorist group that has made of its uh, creed the leading astray of a religion and uh, death its uh, standard. I'd like to acknowledge the presence in Paris of 11 of our counterparts around Ashton and myself. France, uh, since this uh, date, is one of the key contributors uh, to this effort against uh, ISIL. Our aircraft carrier is in the area for the third time in three years. Our Air Force has been acting uh, daily from two bases in the region. Our Army it takes part in uh, training the Iraqi and Kurdish elite um, troops and uh, the French guns at Kayaha significantly contributing to the ground offensive of uh, local troops. Ashton Carter and myself agreed um, a while back that uh, the defense uh, ministers of the most uh, committed countries should uh, meet regularly to review whether our military effort was uh, meeting the strategic objectives that we set ourselves and uh, part of the broader framework that we wish to bring about return to stability in Iraq and Syria as soon as possible. We met for the first time on the 20th of January last. Uh, today is the fifth uh, meeting. We've decided to uh, meet again in mid-December. Our efforts have allowed uh, progress on the ground and significant victories. Um, ISIL is uh, on their retreat. The losses of Kayara, Sinjig, um, and others on its return in Iraq. Mambij uh, with the Syrian Democratic uh, Forces, Jarabulus and Dabik, freed by the um, free Syrian forces with the support of Turkey. The uh, infrastructure and logistic routes uh, of ISIL uh, constrained. ISIL hasn't fallen but is uh, vacillating, we must increase our effort. The um, loss of, uh, of Mosul down the road will be a crushing defeat for ISIL. It will be a major symbolic uh, loss because it's from this town that is um, chief uh, sought to challenge the civilized uh, world and it'd be a loss of resources because the hundreds of inhabitants uh, will be uh, spared, and uh, ISIL has made the use of these uh, towns a systematic uh, principle and um, using um, humans uh, as um, shields quite barbarically. We've devoted our exchanges to current military actions in Mosul. We noted that uh, at this stage, uh, things are going according to plan. <coughs> It'll be a difficult battle, of course, because uh, ISIL has much to lose, but we are determined to support our allies who are fighting on the ground, and we'd like to uh, commend uh, their courage, their devotion and sacrifice for those who were hit during the fighting. We um, also uh, address the next steps, notably uh, Syria, like Mosul, Raqqa, is a strategic uh, objective and remains really the focus of our attention. That was the uh, second issue that we discussed, and you'll appreciate that I can't go into uh, much further detail on that. Lastly, we um, 
referred to the risk that uh, ISIL cornered might project uh, fighters to our territories if the dismantling of terrorist networks is, of course, the job of our internal security colleagues. We noted that uh, access of the territory uh, held by ISIL has become far more difficult since the loss of uh, Mambij and Dabik. It's a positive development which uh, mustn't lead us to let up our vigilance because the uh, level, uh, the threat level remains extremely high. All in all, at this stage in our intervention, our discussions have allowed us to stress the paramount need to maintain the cohesion of the coalition that's uh, demonstrated its effectiveness. We also agreed on the importance of neutralizing ISIL fully to limit its uh, dispersion and its effects in other areas where it might seek to uh, develop as today in Libya or in other parts of Africa. Thank you for your attention. Back here in Paris, of course, uh, France, our oldest ally, the city of lights always having a place in America's heart. In a few weeks here, in fact, everyone in France and around the world, including America, will mark the anniversary of the 13 November Paris attacks. And in the year since, the French people have stood resolute against terror, and the United States is proud to stand with France, just as I'm proud to stand here with you, Jean-Yves, one of my closest colleagues, one of our coalition's most capable leaders, and also a good friend. Minister Le Drian and I just concluded an excellent ministerial with 11 of our counterparts who represent some of the core contributors to the counter ISIL coalition's military campaign. And we were honored to be joined at this ministerial by President Hollande. And I know how committed he is, too, to ensuring the security of France and delivering ISIL the lasting defeat it deserves. The purpose of our meeting today here was fourfold. First, to review the results of our coalition military campaign plan that we devised and set in motion uh, about a year ago, actually less than a year ago. Two, to identify what we as a coalition can do to continue to accelerate the accomplishment of that campaign. Third, how we can better protect our homelands even as we decimate ISIL in Iraq and Syria. And fourth, how to address, to address how we sustain and evolve the robust coalition that we have built and developed so far in response to this threat. And let me just briefly address each of those in turn. First, based on what I saw during my recent visit over the last few days to Iraq, and my conversations with Jean-Yves and our fellow ministers today, we were, and I certainly am, encouraged by the results of our campaign so far, in that it has been proceeding as planned. As you know, we've recently reached a critical milestone in that plan, with our local partners and the Iraqi security forces and the Kurdish Peshmerga having commenced the operation to envelop and collapse ISIL's control over the city of Mosul. The Iraqis are fighting with skill and commitment and courage, enabled by the coalition. And today, we as members of the coalition resolve to follow through with that same sense of urgency and focus on enveloping and collapsing ISIL's control over Raqqa as well. In fact, We've already begun laying the groundwork with our partners to commence the isolation of Raqqa. As we meet here, we're helping to generate the local forces that will do so. This is one of our campaign plan's core objectives, destroying ISIL's parent tumor in Iraq and Syria. And we're on track to do just that. And as Johnny Eve mentioned, we're working also with, in the uh, area 
uh, and have successfully worked in the area of Manbij, Dabiq, other locations in Syria. Uh, I also want to commend uh, Turkish forces and lo local forces with whom they ha and we have worked uh, to help seal their border uh, because Turkey also has suffered from ISIL. Uh, second, as we've done every time we've met as, a coal as coalition defense ministers, we looked at whether and what additional capabilities may be needed to seize emerging opportunities and further accelerate the certain and lasting defeat of ISIL. For example, we already know that there may be additional requirements for more trainers, not only for Iraqi security forces, but particularly for local police and border forces. Third, as our campaign delivers results in both Iraq and Syria, and as we combat the ISIL cancer's metastases in places like Libya and Afghanistan, which is another critical objective of our campaign, we discussed what forms ISIL might take in the future. Here, we particularly focused on the threat to our homelands, because helping protect our homelands is obviously another critical campaign objective. And I was pleased that General Tony Thomas, who is the head of U.S. Special Operations Command, could join us for this discussion. And for our part, we have point, put our Joint Special Operations Command in the lead of countering ISIL's external operations. And we have already achieved very significant results, both in reducing the flow of foreign fighters and removing ISIL leaders from the battlefield. But we need to do more, and that's why we also discussed our responsibilities as defense ministers to help protect our homelands by working closely with our diplomatic, intelligence, law enforcement, and homeland security partners. And we shared best practices and ideas for how each of our countries can improve. Fourth and finally, the defense ministers broadly endorsed a set of defense policy principles that will help ensure we sustain the coalition and our commitments to it, not only for the purposes of helping our local partners win the battle, but also helping them win the peace. After all, we cannot perfectly predict what will happen after our coalition defeats ISIL in Iraq and Syria, so we have to be ready for anything, and we have to keep working together. As long as we do so, I'm confident that we will deliver ISIL the lasting defeat that it deserves. And we look forward to working with Prime Minister Abadi and assessing what support the Iraqis might need in the coming time. Now, obviously, countering ISIL was foremost on Maya and Jani's minds today, but our relationship is much broader and deeper than this one issue. So I'll simply note that we will both be in Brussels tomorrow for the October NATO Defense Ministerial, where we'll discuss the Transatlantic Alliance's response to Russian aggression in the east of Europe, as well as threats emanating from our alliance's southern flank. And I'm pleased to say that we'll be continuing these conversations and more next month when jean -Yves comes to wa visit Washington, D.C., where we'll take steps to institutionalize the stronger, a yet, a yet stronger France-U.S. defense relationship that the two of us have built. I'm very much looking forward to that, John Eve. Thank you all. Merci, uh, H. Il y a Thank you. Um, Thank you, Ash. There are four questions, two French questions and two American questions. I'll start, maybe. Hi. Thank you. A question for both of you. Uh, Secretary Carter, when you spoke in Iraq, you suggested that Mosul and Raqqa would be synchronized. Uh, today you spoke of generating local forces and laying the groundwork for, for Raqqa. Is it correct to assume that the campaigns may overlap at some point, but won't be simultaneous, uh, and uh, as maybe once hoped? And then, and is there any kind of delay in planning here? And then for Minister Ledrian, um, are you urging that local forces move faster to isolate Raqqa, or uh, and how many f local forces do you think still need to be generated to accomplish the mission to, to actually be able to, to take Raqqa? Thank you. Uh, uh, to, your, to your first part of your question, yes, there will be overlap. And that's part of our plan, and we are prepared for that. Um, and uh, uh, s second, uh, there's no delay. Our, this is proceeding on plan even as 
Mosul is proceeding on plan. And for the second question, Mr. Minister. Je confirme la I can confirm the concomitants um, without giving you the agenda. And um, I can also confirm that the initial plan is fully um, respected, so there's no specific request to accelerate. We must um, proceed as was agreed initially, and this is um, happening um, acceptably. Michel Scott pour TF1 et LCI. Monsieur le um, ministre, euh, première chose, une, une Mr. Minister, qui one of the big questions of concern to us are the reactions of ISIL in the second week of operations. I mean, I don't know how far you can be detailed and specific on that. We spent of reinforcements of hundreds of men from Syria to Mosul. There's talk also of uh, Daesh leaders uh, fleeing from Mosul. Could you give us some details on that? And a quest, next question. And what is planned is to encircle Mosul to avoid any um, escape route to the jihadis or um, an attack from one side, from the east, with, that would leave an exit route. For you, Secretary Carter, the, um, uh, the Raqqa question with what sort of military power can you launch such an operation and would that imply a cooperation with our Russian partner? Well, let me begin by telling you, I mean, I can understand the relevance of your question. I mean, you'll also appreciate the relevance of my non-answer on part of your question. But here, I can't reveal the battle plans that would be disseminated on all the media networks tonight. So on the retaking of Mosul, we're continuing according to the initially set up plan, and progression is happening at a, at a pace that is fully acceptable today. I'll tell you that on the <coughs> Daesh uh, ISIL movement, so it's difficult to predict what's going to happen. Are uh, some going to go from Mosul to Derezor or Raqqa? Will others go from Raqqa to Mosul? Well, the issue is first and foremost to get the necessary intelligence to observe these uh, movements, which we have, and to uh, make sure that we can unfold the process on Mosul according to plan. Let me say at the same time, it's true that the next uh, concomitant step is Raqqa, but the taking of Mosul will have a major effect on ISIL in terms of resources, in terms of its um, organization, in terms of its uh, management and leadership, a uh, uh, very significant effect. Even if we maintain the principle according to which the battle will be difficult, it will be long, it's a very big city, and we're moving forward gradually, but uh, sticking to the initial plan. Well, first, with, just to, uh, before I get to your, your question to me, uh, I've uh, seen reports of fighters moving either from Mosul to Raqqa or Raqqa to Mosul, and I can't confirm them, but I can ask you that if you provide me with their specific locations, I'll ask General Thomas to look into it. On the second point, what military force is going to take Raqqa? Uh, it, it, as always, and this is a strategic principle of all of coalition operations, that it is capable and motivated local forces that we identify and then enable. That's our general strategic approach because we're seeking the lasting defeat of ISIL. And a lasting defeat of ISIL can, can't be achieved by outsiders. It can only be uh, 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 achieved by those who live there. And therefore, these will be Syrians enabled by us, and we will seek, as we do, as we are doing in Mosul, a uh, an assault force or a, uh, a, a a force that comprises the noose around um, uh, that we uh, enable, and then very importantly, we're working on 
in every one of these cities, the governance and the policing that must occur to make sure that uh, the peace is kept. And that won't be any, any different in any other, uh, in Raqqa, Mosul, than, than in Ramadi, Fallujah, Heat, Rupa, uh, and so forth. That's fundamental to our strategic approach because we want a victory that sticks everywhere and so it's always local uh, forces and with your with respect to the second part of your question about russia russia is not a participant in our raqqa plan we do deconflict our uh, coalition operations with russia through a very professional military to military channel that channel is active every day and 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 everyone uh, 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 behaves himself very uh, professionally uh, uh, on both sides in that channel Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Mr. Minister. A question really for both of you. Um, you've both long established, and then mentioned again today, the concern about foreign fighters leaving as you have success in Mosul um, and uh, ultimately in Raqqa. Now that you've all joined together and discussed the issue, can you give us a current assessment of the threat to the homelands, um, but also maybe provide a specific example or two of, you know, proposals or some kind of planning to counter this threat to kind of reassure the public. And then, Mr. Secretary, if I may, a, a quick uh, domestic question uh, raised a lot of attention at home. Is uh, you're aware that the Pentagon had signaled that it was going to demand uh, reenlistment bonuses to come back, to be paid back by the soldiers who were uh, wrongly paid them. Do, do, have you looked into this and can you, do you, can you give us a state of play on where that is? Sure. Uh, so I'll start first on external operations and then perhaps the minister can speak to that and then I'll come back to the American issue. Um, uh, we did discuss external operations uh, today. I think we all recognize that protecting our homelands is a fundamental responsibility of all of us. And so it's our highest priority always. Um, and uh, the uh, collapse and destruction of ISIL in Iraq and Syria will destroy both the fact and the idea that there can be a caliphate based upon this ideology. That's essential. However, there will continue to be, and there are uh, now those there or elsewhere who aspire to either coordinating or inspiring attacks in our homeland. And we've all seen them. Uh, and we did discuss what to do about that today. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, destroying the plotters, their networks, uh, their finances, and General Thomas talked about that in some detail. Uh, second, interdicting the flow and the travel of foreign fighters. And third, the activities to um, uh, undercut their messaging on the internet. So this, this external operations, uh, these external acti operations activities go on at the same time that our Iraq and Syria operations go on. Um, and even after the conclusion of the Iraq and Syria operations, we will be continuing with the external operations. Uh, but they will, we will have the advantage at that time of all the, inf the, of the loss of territory in Iraq and Syria, the loss of the physical caliphate, and um, a, a great uh, trove of intelligence and insight into the network that'll help us destroy it everywhere. Well, if I could just um, su supplement Ashton's response by saying that the threat is there. It was, it was, it was there uh, prior to the taking of, of Mosul, and it will still be there afterwards, but in different conditions. Firstly, because 
Uh, one of the uh, uh, hotbeds, one of the crucibles, Mosul, would have been taken. The concomitants of uh, the um, taking of Raqqa would also lead to additional weakening. But we um, agreed, and therein perhaps lies the major lesson of this afternoon, that is that the strength of the coalition should go beyond that pro point. And the pseudo uh, caliphate is a, a, a territory-based caliphate, but it's also a virtual caliphate. Both go uh, together when the territorial caliphate has been eliminated. Um, it will have problems of, uh, of resources, and we must uh, continue that into the virtual caliphate and use the various means available and prevent the virtual uh, caliphate from surviving the territory. Uh, territorial caliphate, but we have to begin by um, achieving um, uh, victory on the ground. Um, let me add a further important point. The foreign fighters now have difficulty in entering or, or leaving because the fact that the area between uh, Azaz and Jarabulus has been uh, blocked by the um, the interventions that have uh, that have taken place with the uh, Syrian army and the uh, Turks. The fact that. Uh, uh, Mambij has been taken by the uh, democratic Syrian forces means that uh, the um, border is um, not so porous and that's an, um, an obstacle to the foreign fighters and that was part of our discussion this afternoon with a strong uh, need for firm action over the longer term and the problem of uh, threats there's a, a risk of uh, attacks that remains permanent it was before remains present common resolve is to eradicate uh, fully the caliphate be it uh, virtual or territorial. May, may I, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Minister, there's just one other part of, of the questioner's question, which uh, I apologize to everyone in the French press, but this is a, an, a, an issue back home, but it's, it's a very important issue, so I want to uh, I want to answer it. Yes, I'm aware, and I, the first thing I want to say is that, you know, anybody who volunteers to serve in the Armed Forces of the United States deserves our gratitude and respect, period. Uh, I'm aware of the specific issue that you're speaking of. It's got its complexities to it, uh, and we are going to look into it and resolve it. I have asked uh, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Bob Work. He is working on that right now, um, uh, uh, but it's a significant uh, issue for the reason I indicated. One last question. Ministers from the French news, the name of a major player wasn't mentioned, Turkey. Were you recently, uh, Secretary uh, Carter, you were in Turkey tomorrow morning. What will you say to your Turkish uh, counterpart after today's meeting, whereas Turkey is um, making lots of statements, wants to be present in Mosul and Raqqa, and considers this whole region as being uh, part of its natural strategic area. Second question, if on my information refers to human rights uh, violations, very serious ways of executions and uh, feared actions are looming of people taken hostage. I mean, have you taken these factors into account in your plan and do you confirm? I mean, how can they impact the strategy on the ground? Two questions, is that? Sorry, that's two. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, and then you go ahead and then I'll follow. Whatever you want. On Turkey, well, Turkey 
been the victim of Daesh ISIL on several occasions, and for us, Turkey is a is a key partner in this fight. The uh, taking of uh, Dabik is uh, an important, significant success that we must underscore, and with Turkey, our objectives must coincide, because we have a common interest in defeating ISIL with those who are in a position to do so, and for that, we must coordinate um, our efforts to make sure that all our objectives uh, coincide, and tomorrow we'll be meeting uh, together with Ashton, our uh, Turkish counterpart in Brussels, and we'll discuss both the major um, uh, challenge for, for both ourselves and Turkey and the very practical um, implementation of um, our shared objectives that we can readily identify. On the other part of your question that um, concerns um, the uh, behavior of uh, ISIL, they're going to use old, most barbaric uh, methods. Uh, in other words, the greater the difficulty, the more the, uh, the methods will be uh, tough and egregious, but we will uh, follow the same responsibility that we have implemented since the start of the coalition. We have very strict rules of engagement in order to preserve to the full human lives, uh, uh, notably uh, civilian populations, and we have also ensured that there is uh, humanitarian uh, support that is uh, implemented as Mosul is retaken. That's part of our plan. It's um, fully factored into our capability. He, he, he answered both questions so well, I can't do anything but agree uh, completely with everything Jean-Yves said. I really can't. Oh, one thing. Your premise of your question was wrong, because we both did talk about Turkey, <laughs> because it's an important member of the coalition. But I'll just add that. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So there.